lots of times we talk about having faith as opposed to feeling. That we don't want to base our faith upon feelings, and yet a big part of our growth in the life of a Christian is really about feelings in some way. For some of us, we got saved by feelings. We had this outrageous emotional experience when we asked Jesus into our life that we either went forward in an altar call, you know, you've heard the, the routine, you know, you confess that you're a sinner and you ask Jesus into your life and you know, all these things go on and the whole scene, the setting is set up and you're really wound up, you know, to expect something and, you know, for a lot of people, that something is God and it happens. But for some people, they don't get that feeling and so we try to explain that it's not about feeling but it's about the reality of God coming into your life. But at the same time that we try not to overemphasize feeling, we don't want to underemphasize it either because the bottom line is you should have an experience with God. In other words, when you got saved, and if you are saved, if you're a Christian, you should be having a personal experience of God, meaning that in some way the dots should be connecting. God should be somehow contacting you and you should be contacting God. There should be some kind of interrelationship, meaning that somehow, in some way, you know, you yourself without anybody else around you, that you know God or God knows you and that you've had a connection with Him, that you've talked to Him and He's talked to you. Because you see, if you don't, you're really not saved. You're just kind of like gone through the motions. But you can by faith believe that if God hasn't really gotten a hold of you, you know, if you just keep going, God will, because He promised. Now, when I say all this, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because there are a lot of people that say, well, you know, you just go to an altar call, you know, and ask God to forgive your sins and give Him your life and then just go on your way. And, you know, for those, that's kind of, you know, not right. And some people say, well, you know, you go forward and you do these altar calls and you go through Bible studies, you go to church, you know, and you read your Bible every day and you'll be fine. Well, no, that's not quite true. You see, Jesus saw thousands of people come forward because they were all excited. They went to great revivals that he had, so to speak. I mean, they weren't called revivals in those days. They were just people looking for answers, like you and I. They were everyday people that worked at jobs, that were being oppressed, that were under great oppression by the Roman Empire and that they wanted a solution to their everyday life problems. And that's part of what being a Christian is about. It's being able to have a spiritual solution to a practical reality. Because the kingdom that we're in is a spiritual kingdom. We get invited into the kingdom of God if we ask Jesus to be Lord of our life. He says that he would open the door and we could come in to him as well as he could come in to us. So we enter into his kingdom from the world we live in now. So in some ways, God wants to prove to you that he's not only the living God, but that he's practical and real. So you should be having some type of intercourse, conversation with him, some way of communicating that you and him talk and when you do, you'll find that he will direct your life. Then you know you have a relationship. And once you have that, once you've grabbed a hold of that, once you've gotten a hold of God, like just clinging to him with even, even just reaching out like the woman with the issuance, you know, that she was minstrel and she just reached out, wanted to touch his robe. Her faith was one of, she wanted really to be with Jesus. She wanted to follow him, but she knew that she wasn't worthy, that she would, you know, like, maybe cause other people to, you know, like not follow him. And so she remained one of the ostracized and far away from him because she was unclean because of her cycle. And the fact that she continually had that cycle was definitely a medical problem. So when she reached out, she really wanted to be with Jesus and Jesus healed her and knew, it, you know, but he wanted her to admit it. So he confronted her and she did. And so 
Likewise with you, there comes a time in your life where you have to recognize you need to do something to pursue God, to follow after him hard, so you can prove by experience to yourself, not to anyone else, that you're a Christian. And the reason I say that is because there's going to come times where in your life you'll go through some teaching or some Bible study or some pastor or some church or some elder, some deacon, wherever you are, whatever religious venue you are, and you'll say, oh man, that guy's off the wall. And then you might think your faith in God is off the wall. But it has nothing to do with the man. Because you see, God has a relationship with you, not a relationship with you through the man. It doesn't go through a man. Whether you're a husband, a wife, a daughter, a son, whatever, your relationship doesn't go through someone else to get to God. It goes to God direct. Because God is personal and real. And he wants you to have that relationship with him. Because if you don't, you, like I said, you might not be quite what God wants you to be. You may just be a follower and not really his disciple or really a Christian like he said you should be. So when you do that and you have some type of personal experience with God, then the beauty of it is, is that no one and nothing can take that away from you, can it? Because you can write down in your book, your little prayer journal, so to speak, God answered me on that day, and I know that God's real because God answered me on that day, and it came true. So you see, no matter what comes, whether it be some fallen ministry or some other, you know, satanic attack, so to speak, or somebody confusing you or abusing you or whatever, because you know in life, it'll come at you from all the different angles that there are. But when you have an experience with God, Nothing can take that away from you. Oh, man, because you know God is real. It's kind of like, you know, people tell me all the time, because I was a Jesus freak, you know, I, I'm kind of, you know, I got the emotional thing, you know, and that one, that one I got down, I didn't know what it was. And then I got baptized Holy Spirit, and that was even more emotional, and I didn't know what that was, and it was different than the first when I got saved. And then I got speaking in tongues, and that was different, you know, and then I got, like, all kinds of things happening, and that was wild, and, man, it was like all these emotional things going on. But you know what? The beauty was that I kept challenging God to say, look, you keep saying this and I keep looking and it don't seem to be true. So I kept asking God and going after him. So when I asked God, look, you said you could hear, we could hear your voice and, you know, that your sheep hear my voice and they know me and they would not follow the voice of another. I hear a lot of voices all the time, you know, people telling me what to do and where to go and how to be and what this, that and the other thing. I don't know which way to go. You know, thank God I grew up under kind of the mantle of Calvary Chapel, you know. I mean, I was getting some good teaching, so I was always going back into the Bible and studying, you know, and really reading at it and going, what's it say? What's it say? You know, and then I'd go to God and say, God, you said this is it. You know, where is it? You know, I wanted to know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't want to go along with all these wackos, you know, because, you know, here I was not a drug addict. Here I was not this major sinner. Here I was just like some poor kid, you know, that was kind of like, I felt like, not a sinner, <laughs> what did I know, you know, and I got into this Jesus movement, and now I'm looking around like, you guys were drug addicts, murderers, thieves, you know, convicts, whatever, you know, and I was a nice guy, <laughs> lonely, but nice guy, so I didn't want to get what they got, because, you know, I was kind of worried about what I had was okay or not, you know, and so, man, you know. When I heard all these testimonies, I thought, well, they seem cool, but I don't know. You never know, you know, you got to be careful. So I was always careful, you know, and I still studied and everything, but I always went to God first, and I asked him, what's true? And thank God I had somebody like Romaine to tell me that I was doing the right thing, you know, and Chuck told me too, you know, but it was kind of like Romaine really pushed it, <laughs> you know. If you knew Romaine, he pushed it. Oh boy, did he push it. But in my life, God decided one day to just blow my mind. He decided to speak to me direct. And I was shocked out of my shorts. <laughs> Literally. No, not really. But I was very shocked. And so, when God does something for you, or God does something with you, the wonderful thing about the experience with God is no one can take that away from you. No one. 
I mean, it's one of the most marvelous things that I look back on my life, and I still think of the times that God speaks to me, and I, I enjoy that fellowship with Him. I look forward to it daily, but I remember the time when He spoke audibly, and it was like, man, was that so over the top that it was just, wow. You know, and I don't speak much about it, because to me, I don't want people, you know, I want people seeking that. Yes, believe me, I want you to hear God speak it. Believe me, I want you to hear His voice. I believe that the Scripture teaches that very clearly and very audibly. You know, you should hear God's voice. No doubt about it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. But more than that, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, not read it. So you got to get a handle on that. You know, you know, you got to argue with God about it a little bit and say, uh, God, I want to go up the mountain no matter what the cost, you know, and I want to pay the price no matter what it takes, you know, to hear you speak. And, you know, the... There's a prize, you know. I nearly died three times, and, you know, I've got some incurable disease, you know. It's always present. <laughs> Death working in me. You know. My flesh is always dying, but, you know, my life is always surviving, you know. So, praise the Lord, you know, I seem to be abiding, you know, in Him. You get that? So, there's a cost to following hard after God like that, but the beauty of knowing beyond any shadow of a doubt that Jesus is with you. Wow, what a wonder it produces. Because then God blesses you with continually wanting more of Him and less of the world. In daily light, it's kind of fun because it's only Scripture. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Man, what more needs to be said? Don't talk about what you don't know. Talk about what you do know. Don't talk about what you haven't had experience in your life. Talk about what you've experienced in your life. That which we've seen, that which we've heard, that which we've handled with our own hands. When I say that I've heard God speak, I mean I heard God speak. <laughs> Bluntly. You know? I mean, when I say, you know, wow, I used to see, you know, people like, you know, I would know things that about them before they came in the door, you know, when I was in the ministry down at, like, Calvary, you know, in the tape playing library. Believe me, the people around me were going, how did you know that? And I, I don't know, you know, the Lord said, you know, kind of, you know, to me it was like, you do it too, you know. But that's the way it works, you know, it's just like, you know. Or like you could sense things in a room, you know, or people, you know, you just knew what to pray for them. Or you would walk along and just say, Lord, I want to, you know, pray for them. And, you know, you just kind of like go along, you walk in the Spirit. It's kind of neat, you know. I didn't always do it because, you know, there times I backslid and fell apart, you know, fell this way, fell that way, you know, kind of went, you know. <laughs> but, hey, you know. Life is an experience. But the joy of knowing that God wants you to share what you've experienced with Him, what you've seen with Him, what you've done with Him, means you get to know Him. Do you get it? You're supposed to keep getting to know Him more and more. You know, I mean, have you ever seen, uh, like, the latest, if you're a young person, you know what this means. You know, it's, it's rap. <laughs> you know, it's rap songs. It's hip-hop, you know. Well, you get to know God. <laughs> no, you get to... Tell them, you know. <laughs> you get to declare those things you've seen, those things you have done, those things you know. And until you know that, get to know God. That's the point. You get to know Him more and more. Then you go out and share what you know. Don't share something you don't know, because you don't know. But what you do know, <laughs> no one can take away from you. Behold my hands and my feet that it is I, myself. Handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and blood, as you have seen me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. He that saw it bore record, and his record is true, and he knows that he saith truth that you might believe. We have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. One of the greatest joys I have, believe it or not, was some of the most fearful times that I've almost made a fool of myself. <laughs> not like I couldn't do that on my own. <laughs> no. 
But in the ministry, <laughs> you know, you kind of step out in faith sometimes, doing things kind of crazy, you know. And that's when God reveals his power, when you risk looking like a fool, that God may look like God. And I've enjoyed different times letting people know that God is real. And the look on their face and the joy of their heart, you know, at the moment that they decide that and they finally find out and that God really is working with them and really is talking to them, it's a, it, it's a wonder, you know. Now, they don't always stay that way, but at the moment, it's cool. You know, that they can't deny it. And that's why I say to you, take the time. Really, stop what you're doing. If you don't have an experience with God yet that you can put a finger on and tell someone about, stop what you're doing. Go back to your Bible or whatever. Get alone with God, your devotional or something or video. Say, God, I want an experience like that person was talking about. I want to hear your voice. I want to see you know fire come down from heaven. Be careful about what you pray for. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, <laughs> it might happen. Now, we won't talk about that, but I do know there was a place that got burned up one time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So be careful what you pray for. But get real. Tell God you don't want to do anything unless He reveals to you what you want. He wants for you. And that you can say with your own hands, you know it's true. With your own heart, you know it's a fact. With your own mind, you've seen it. You've heard it. You know it. You know God. And you know <laughs> that Jesus is with you. And you know how you know? You just know, <laughs> like they used to say. But you know because you've experienced it for yourself. Don't be satisfied with religion. That'll trip you up. But get content with putting experience inside your religion by having a relationship with him.